Wow. What a Nintendo Direct, y'all. I have absolutely zero complaints on it. Yesterday, I gave my thoughts on a video where I made some predictions, and I had that hunch feeling, man, that they were going to do something special with Super Mario, and boy, did they do it. Now, if you tuned into my kick stream last night, we also had a discussion at the end of it where I was like, man, you know, there's this rumor of a 2D Mario game, but then there's also this rumor of a Super Nintendo remake coming out. I was like, I, I don't think it's going to be a link to the past. The rumor was it was going to be a link to the past being remade. And to me, it just didn't make any sense at all for a new Zelda game to come out after Tears of the Kingdom is still fresh. So I was like, maybe, maybe it's something along the lines of the... 2D Mario game and the Super Nintendo remake being some kind of collaboration together and we're going to get Super Mario RPG. Whatever thing popped in my head last night, you can go back and watch my stream replay on my kick. I was like, the more I thought about Super Mario RPG, the more it made sense to me. And my God, to, to quote Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park, the son of a bitch... They did it. Nintendo did it. What a pleasant surprise. Among other announcements. But I just wanted to get that right off the bat. Very pleased with that announcement. The 2D Mario game, Super Mario Wonder. Yeah, it looks kind of cool and interesting. But to me, I just... I wanted something new with the Mario series. And that's just a little too close cut to Mario Deluxe and Mario Wii and Mario U and... The, the 2D Mario games, even though this is the first one in about 10 years, I, I wanted some kind of major difference with it. This does have a lot of interesting power-ups and stuff that we're going to talk about in a little bit. But in my opinion, I would have rather had it look like 8-bit or 16-bit sprites. I said a proper Super Mario Bros. 4, and people, of course... <laughs> Mario World is technically Mario 4. Uh, yeah, technically, but in North America, it wasn't called that. I would like a sprite-based Mario 2D game. Just my opinion. But, yeah, there was a lot of pleasant surprises that came out of this Nintendo Direct. It was super early, but I went back and caught, you know, the recap. I think they knocked it out of the park. Uh, the majority of these games they're releasing this year, which is good. They don't like to do this whole announce stuff, show a little logo, and the game never comes out. Except when it comes to Metroid. <laughs> Metroid Prime 4. Where are you at? Now, they definitely included a good amount of third-party games. Some that are a little old, but pleasant surprises. Like Batman Arkham. The games coming out. But we'll talk about that in a minute, too. The main thing, though, is Super Mario RPG was like the biggest surprise. Uh, it's getting a complete makeover. Complete remake. And it will be released in November. So it's not far off at all. Like, good thing we don't have to wait a whole year for it. I'll take November. We're coming to the end of June. So we just got a handful of months. Pre-order's already up online. I'll leave some links down below in case you want to click the affiliate link to my Amazon. You know, to help the channel out at no extra cost to you. On top of that, Princess Peach is going to be getting a standalone game. Uh, a solo adventure. The only thing we had anything since Princess Peach's game on the DS, right? Not much that came out about it. We don't know much info about that. But that's that's interesting that they're going to go that route. Detective Pikachu is also coming in October. Not too far off. And I think, I think that's going to be pretty cool. <sighs> so with Super Mario Brothers Wonder, we got an elephant power-up. I know I'm all over the place right here. I'm just off the top of my head. The stuff that stuck out to me i think going back to the franchise's roots is pretty cool but including new animations new quirky power-ups i think it's gonna be a fun little game but still i would have liked a sprite based game uh so yeah let's go ahead and get right to it uh pokemon scarlet and violet they're gonna be getting a dlc i still think pokemon scarlet and violet had a lot of issues as far as performance goes i remember a lot of slowdown a lot of frame rate issues I would like a patch, please. Maybe along with this DLC, we'll be getting a patch. It's going to be a two-part DLC. I think there's like a Indigo Plateau, Teal Mask, uh, Hidden Treasure, or, or whatever it is. Uh, Hidden Treasure of Area Zero expansion, which is like the 
end game part, that whole area. That would be cool to go into that area. But they really didn't show much as far as like, you know, just a little bit of gameplay footage. For now, I, I'm thinking maybe when it comes closer to the fall or winter when this release date comes out, they're going to be showing uh, a full Pokemon Direct or something that's going to be showcasing a lot of the features and things that are coming from this. So stay tuned on this. This is something that's going to get its own Direct, hands down. On top of that, we got Sonic Superstars. We've heard this release already in the past. Uh, it's coming out very soon on all the gaming platforms, not just the Nintendo Switch. And they showed quite a bit of the new zones, the stages that are going to be in this game, and local co-op for up to four players. So that's actually kind of cool. Again, Classic Sonic is what I like. That's why I'm more excited for like Sonic Origins Plus because you get all the four OG Classic Sonic games plus the 12 Game Gear games. So yeah, I mean, Sonic Superstars does look cool. Uh, I'll probably be playing it on Xbox, though, if I'm going to be completely honest. I'm at that point in my life where if games are playable elsewhere, I choose that over the Switch version. Because to me, the Switch just feels like it's getting a little aged, you know. Tears of the Kingdom pushed it to its limits. But there's just, I don't know, I, I, I would just would rather play it on, you know, the new consoles. On top of that, we got a game called Palia, Palia, that looked pretty cool. It was a free to play life simulator. Uh, you could play solo, you could play co op. I think it looks pretty cool. It has a little vibe with like you know the villages, the village aesthetic, and stuff like that. Real cozy feeling. I think that one seems like it's going to be interesting, but you know, with free to play games, there's going to be a lot of microtransactions. If this one has decent decent stuff that you can buy and play and customize and it doesn't get boring and there's stuff to do on it maybe i will check this one out i don't know if this one's a switch only game somebody clarify that with me i, I haven't really done my research as far as that again if this is on the other consoles like xbox or playstation i would much rather play it on those consoles but playing something like this kicking back winding unwinding and you know, these life sim games, they could get pretty addictive. Even like the older ones like Harvest Moon and things like that. I I'm always interested in life simulators. Now, we got Persona 5 Tactica, which is an upcoming real-time strategy spinoff of the series. Showed a short teaser. I'm not really big into the Persona series, but I know that this one is a franchise that anytime you get a Persona game sent over, all the weebs lose it. So I think this was a W. <laughs> There's a new character that was shown, and I think it's like a, a cute remix, I guess, on uh, another spinoff of the game or or characters from it, the Phantom Thieves or something like that. Again, I'm not too much into Persona 5, but I can tell you guys I know that this is a win in many people's books. Lots of lots of spinoffs. Uh, me, personally, it's not for me, but the next game is the one that I kind of predicted, and I'm glad I got it right. Super Mario RPG, guys. Uh, fuck, that game came out 25 years ago. <laughs> I remember reading Game Pros about Super Mario RPG, and, and now we're getting a comeback, and it's coming in November. I can't wait. I'm actually pre-ordering this some bitch already. I played through it when it came to the Wii Virtual Console because I'd never had it growing up. I do own the original physically, uh, but now we're going to get it. So Gino's back. Malo's back. I mean, two characters that I've been wanting to be playable in Smash Brothers for quite some time. It's going to get a complete makeover. I think that's pretty freaking legit. Uh, the, the trailer was awesome. That was such a great throwback with the original little introduction to the video game. And then it just updated the graphics. I'm also interested to see what we're going to get. If there's going to be like new areas to explore, new quests, new cutscenes, maybe a bigger map would be pretty cool. I think uh, there's a lot of potential for this game to do big. A lot of people have been clamoring for Super Mario RPG. We're finally getting it. On top of that, we got Myth Force, which reminded me of like a Saturday morning cartoon, almost like a He-Man thing. It's an, a first-person fantasy game. I love fantasy. I love this whole swords and goblins and bows and arrows and magic and melee weapons. And There's going to be four-player co-op action. This is on Steam already. Uh, via early access if you want to play it on steam it's going to be coming to the switch later and hopefully on the other consoles all right on top of that we got a update quick update for splatoon 3 mm, 
I really haven't played it, but it's Blatfest stuff, and I'm just not. Uh, I moved on from Splatoon 3, if I'm going to be honest. Now, I mentioned Detective Pikachu earlier. It's coming in October. That's going to be fast getting here. Uh, so, yeah, the mystery-solving Pokemon Pikachu uh, is going to be making his way, drinking a lot of coffee as that. And and I'm sure all you Detective Pikachu fans are excited with that. That was that was kind of a neat little surprise. Pokemon, you know, I, I haven't been always the biggest Pokemon fan, but now that we're getting... Um, more into Pokemon on this side of things. If you noticed, I had all the Pokemon card openings and I played the uh, Pokemon Violet, I believe that's the one I had, and even uh, Legends Arceus and stuff like that. I've, I've slowly started getting into the thing, so maybe Detective Pikachu will be something that I like. Again, still kind of a noob when it comes to that. Now, I mentioned Batman Arkham Trilogy earlier. I absolutely love the Arkham games. I still need to play Arkham Knight, though, the final one. But as far as like Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, and um, Origins went, I played those. This one's not going to have Origins in it. It's going to have uh, Asylum, City, and Knight. This is coming in fall 2023. And... I think it's good that they're releasing this in a compilation package with all their DLC. So if for whatever reason you haven't played these games and the Switch is your only option, get them. This is going to be good. This is going to be like a must buy. Uh, I don't know anybody in this world that hadn't played any of the Asylum games. So <laughs> for whatever reason, again, if you haven't played them, do it. Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, well, masterpieces. I still got to finish Night though. So that we got like a new uh, Dragon Quest game, Dragon Quest Monsters, The Dark Prince. I love the art style of Dragon Quest because it's made by Akira Toriyama who did Dragon Ball. I, I played uh, Quest Builders and a couple of the other ones, but I haven't really been into the Dragon Quest series. This is coming in December. Maybe I'll check it out. I think it's pretty cool. It's a little little RPG action going on. RPGs are always fun. I'm just not into that weeb stuff dragon quest luckily isn't too weeb now the main course of this uh presentation i thought was going to be pikmin 4 and surprisingly there wasn't too much about it we got um coming out in about a month pikmin 4 is coming out july 21st and they put a new trailer out here they showed out a lot of the details of the game and you know basically how the game's mechanics work with its core loop uh, you know, you collect treasures around the planet, you fix the ship, you use the Pikmin characters with their own unique abilities to, you know, I guess, transfer and, you know, teleport and go around the maps and stuff like that. It's a cute game. If you haven't done yourself a favor, play Pikmin, play some of the older ones, because guess what? They are going to be today having Pikmin 1 and 2 released with new HD graphics new HD remakes. It's coming in digital form, though. I don't know if maybe eventually they might do a physical. Who knows? But you can get both of them today in a special digital bundle. There's also a demo coming out on the eShop for Pikmin 4 once that game comes out as well. Speaking of visually enhanced games, we're getting Luigi's Mansion 2 Dark Moon to the Switch. That was originally a 3DS game. I own it. I just, I'm not a big handheld guy, so I played just about, about an hour or two of it. Never picked it back up. Kind of put it away because I just, I can't get into handhelds. But now we're getting an option to play it on the Switch. So <laughs> that's a good little surprise. Luigi, I'll take a Luigi game any day, even if it's a port. Next up, we got DLC for Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope. I need to go back and finish that game as well. I like the Mario and Rabbids games. This is the second DLC. It's going to be called The Last Bark Hunter. And I think it looks pretty cool. Has new areas to explore, new enemies. If you haven't played Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope, go ahead and check it out. Now back to Super Mario Bros. Wonder. This game looks like it's, it's going to stick with the, I guess, art direction that the new Super Mario Brothers series had. But there's going to be a lot of, like, new enhanced and animations. Quirky power-ups. We got an elephant Mario. And <laughs> I think that's going to be awesome. And the beauty of it is October. It's coming out in October. We don't have to wait long to play a brand-new side-scrolling 2D Mario game. Again, this one's, like, the first one, like, in a decade because uh, they ported over Deluxe. Then we got Mario 8 Deluxe 
booster course. We got a new pack coming out. They just keep adding on and on and on. At this point, why even make Mario Kart 9? Just keep adding new additions to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That's a game that everybody has. I think like the the console to owner ratio, that's probably the most successful Switch game that almost every console owner owns. And there's going to be three new characters and eight new tracks. So, I mean, why not? Keep adding to the game. Uh, we got Master Collection for Master uh, Metal. I was gonna say Master Sword, Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume One. A good opportunity to play the Metal Gear Solid games if you didn't get to get them during the GameCube and PS One, PS Two era. You're gonna have the NES games on there too, I believe. Yeah, you get the the Metal Gear and Snake's Revenge as well. Lots of different bo uh, bonus collection content. Uh, art books, digital soundtracks. You also get um, Metal Gear Solid, Sons of Liberty, and Snake Eater. So coming out October, I think the 24th or something like that. We're also getting a WarioWare game called WarioWare Move It. This one says it has over 200 micro games that focus on lightning fast reactions. And it's, um, I guess, movement based. I'm not sure. But, it, you know, with Move It, maybe that hints at movement. I'm not a big fan of Joy-Con stuff. That's a little too one-two switch for me. Top of that, we have a few other games. Penny's Big Breakaway, made by the team that made Sonic Mania. It's going to have that colorful, cartoonish charm that Sonic games have. Looks like a 3D platformer. We also had Star Ocean, the second story R, being parted over. Uh, Vampire Survivors is coming to the Switch. I had that on Xbox. Such a great little time sink game. We had Silent Hope, which looks like a JRPG type of game. Headbangers Rhythm Royale. On top of that, we also had a game called Gloomhaven, which is based off of a popular board game. Manic Mechanics and, and other games. So the main thing to point out here, though, is Mario RPG is coming. Mario uh, Wonder is coming. Metal Gear. New Mario Kart 8. Uh, Luigi's Mansion. Pikmin 4. So solid Nintendo Direct here. Not half bad. Um, you know, had it been a big E3 showcase, I think it would have been good enough because of the merit of Mario RPG on its own. There's still a lot of games out there, though, that we don't know anything about. Metroid Prime 4, for example. When's that coming out? When is it going to happen? Uh, who knows? I guess maybe <laughs> we just got to shut up and wait. But Mario RPG is a good thing to tide us over in the meantime. I know a lot of you guys were going to ask me what my thoughts were on it. So I wanted to just give a video, give them my thoughts, give them a quick little recap and stuff like that. I know I haven't really focused on, yo, Eric used to be a gaming channel. What happened? I haven't really done gaming too much, but I wanted to go ahead and touch base on that because I know I'm going to be asked about it tonight when I stream later on. So make sure you guys keep up to date and uh, keep uh, notifications on this stuff so you don't miss when I make videos about whatever. So <sighs> what do you guys think about the direct today? Comment down below, click like, help share this video out. I'll see you on the next one.